Good night and a happy Wednesday to one and all. Good night. It's good to see you all here. Welcome to those in the church and welcome to those viewing us online. Before we begin, please stand as we offer a word of prayer. Let's stand, everyone. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Dear Lord and Father, we are indeed grateful and thankful that you have brought us here tonight to hear your word. Not only to hear your word, dear Lord, but to sing your praises. We are asking that you bring those who are on their ways here safely. Asking you that you give us a blessing tonight. And asking you that you give us a wonderful night. Thanks for all you have done and all that you will continue to do for us. In your son's name, amen. Be seated. We're going to start off with that song number 633, Six Tree Tree, When We All Get to Heaven. love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Sing and shout the victory, shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim's pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven. Sing and shout, shout the victory. Let us all be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven. What a, day, what a day of rejoicing be. that will be when we, oh, when we all see Jesus We will sing and shout, shout the victory Onward to the prize before us Soon his beauty will be Stretch the streets of gold. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Sing the chorus again. When we all get to heaven, what a day. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we, when we all see Jesus We will sing and shout the victory. shout the victory Hallelujah Amen We'll continue with You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I seek you are my all in all. You are my 
strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, as we sing our team song. Built for me in glory, and I heard about. 
Our dear, kind, and most loving Father, we indeed thankful for your love, your watch care, your protection during this day. We thank you for bringing us here safely, and we ask you, dear Lord, that you'll pour out your blessing upon us. Remember, dear Lord, the visitors among us and those in the Valley of Decision. Pray, Lord, for the messenger tonight. Pray that you continue to bless him and help that as we sit and listen we will receive a blessing which is in store. Thank you now for hearing and answering our prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Seated. Good night, brothers and sisters. I am very happy to be here this evening. What's about you? Have you been enjoying the series? Yes. I am also indeed. Tonight, the pleasure is mine to welcome every one of you in the house of God. The house of God is the best place to be. And there is always a blessing to be found when we come in the house of God. So I hope you enjoy whatever that has to be presented tonight, particularly the word, and I hope you continue to attend the series. And our opening number is 183. 183. By the way, um, I just remembered there is one of our outstanding member from Breath of Life who is celebrating her birthday. She's an outstanding person. She's not young, neither is she very old. <laughs> but she's a lively lady. She's still a uh, uh, singing our choir, and this person is Sister Reed. Let's give her a round of applause. All right, thank you. Our opening number is 183. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> okay, Sister Reed.
nothing good for him I've done. Nothing good for him I've done. How could he such love be so? Lord, I own my heart is wound. Help me now, my love, to show. And I will sing, I will sing of Jesus' love. Please be seated, everybody. Good night, everyone. Oh, I enjoy that singing just now. Oh, yes. I will sing of Jesus' love. The hymn writer says, nothing good for him I've done. How could he such love bestow? You know, the Lord loves us very, very much. The Bible tells us greater love has no man than this. And a man laid down his life for his friend. So welcome one, welcome all to our, our session tonight. We, hey, we are in halfway in this, the second week. Meaning that we are halfway into the total, totality of the program. So I, I too want to join in saying a special welcome, especially to those who are joining and viewing online. We thank you again for choosing either the Jackson um, um, stream or the Ebenezer stream for worship with us tonight. And I too want to join and extending a happy birthday greetings to, to uh, Sister Reed. Maybe, maybe we should sing that song, Oh, Happy Birthday to You. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the young version of it is what we're singing for Sister Reed tonight. Come. Oh, happy. Oh, happy birthday to you every day of the year. May you find Jesus near. Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. The best that you ever had. Amen, amen. Happy birthday indeed. Now, are there any new guests among us tonight. Anyone here for the very first time? If you're here, just raise your hand and uh, we have a special token. One, two. I saw how many hands? One, two. Please stand. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. Along with our other guests who have been coming from night to night, we welcome you and thank you again for sharing these precious moments with us. And um, so thanks for joining in our, our worship service here at the Ebenezer Church. God bless you as you worship with us this evening. Our topic for tonight, very quickly, our topic for tonight is more than just time. More than just time. And uh, tomorrow night, we are back here again tomorrow night, am I correct? All right, tomorrow night is an off night. So we'll be back here on Friday night or Sabbath night. And our topic for Friday night, Sabbath night, is life beyond the limits. Life beyond the limits. And tonight, we're going to be having a special prayer, also special needs. You've brought your needs. We have brought our needs. And tonight, the evangelists will pray a special prayer for, our, for, for us tonight during the start of the, um, the preaching session uh, this evening. And also, this coming Sabbath, Saturday, we're going to be right here at Ebenezer. All three of the congregations will be here. It's going to be a big celebration Sabbath. Amen. Amen. And, and on top of that, well, I'll let the, the, the evangelists announce it. 
But um, you'll hear more as he comes on to speak. So God bless you. We're getting ready now for our, um, our quiz time. And then after our quiz, I think this time we are having the, the health um, nugget by video. Good night, good night, good night. How are you? That's good. First of all, I have to make an apology. No, I said Mr. last night. Mrs. Joel, where is she? Yes, ma'am. It's a she and not a him. <laughs> spelling, spelling, J-O-E-L. So, yes, ma'am. Have you covered this time? <laughs> yes, I want to also recognize uh, two of our visitors who would have gained full points last night. Again, Mr. Leroy Drakes, he's not here for sure, and Onita Lane. And also another young gentleman, Jonathan Tull. Wow. Yes, yeah, so, you know, let's encourage the little ones. On to tonight's quiz. Number one, yes. Physical care of the body is important. However, spiritual care of our souls is of greater importance. Yes, physical care of the body is important. However, spiritual care of our souls is of greater importance, true or false? Question two, we are tempted through the sense of taste, touch, sight, smell, and hearing. We are tempted through the sense of taste, touch, sight, smell, and hearing, true or false. Question three. Jesus' first temptation was through appetite. Jesus' first temptation was through appetite. True or false? Question four. God wants us to prosper in all things. God wants us to prosper in all things. And our final question, we need to be contented with what we have. We need to be contented with what we have. True or false? Thank you. In Genesis 2, 2, and 3, we read about our 11th way to stand for wellness, sufficient rest. We read, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Sleep is essential to maintain a well-balanced mind and a healthy body. It allows your body to renew itself and aids in healing. Rest strengthens the immune system and can add years to your life. If deprived of adequate sleep, great demands are made on your backup energy resources. If you do this habitually, you can expect to have little resistance to disease and stress later on. Not all sleep, however, is equal. The hours before midnight are better than the hours after. When you get sleep a few hours before midnight, 
It correlates with the body's natural secretion of melatonin, your circadian rhythm hormone, as well as growth hormone and other regulatory hormones in your body. And the body is more rested. The old saying, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, has validity to it. Adults need about seven to nine hours of sleep a night, with decreasing amounts as one ages, slightly. Children need more. A mistake that many people make is using medications to help them sleep. This actually decreases the beneficial sleep cycles and leaves you less rested, and you become dependent upon them for sleep. Research has also shown that their use increases your risk of death from all causes by 300 to 500 percent. It is best to avoid them altogether. In order to get a good night's sleep, follow these simple tips. One, avoid caffeine, tobacco, or alcohol. Two, exercise on a regular basis, but not within two to three hours of bedtime. Three, don't eat within three hours of bedtime. Four, have a regular relaxing bedtime routine that you follow each night. Five, go to bed the same time each night. Six, if you have trouble sleeping at night, avoid taking naps during the day. Number seven, avoid anything exciting before bedtime, like movies, TV, news, and so on. Number eight, make a list before bedtime of all that you need to accomplish and plan ahead before bedtime how you will accomplish it. Then refuse to think about them when you lie down. Number nine, pray and give your worries and problems to Jesus and let him carry them. Ten, memorize promises from the Bible that speak about peace and God being in control. And number 11, make bedtime your intercessory prayer time. Pray for others and their needs, not you and yours. When your mind is distracted, bring it back again to the task. Anytime you wake up before it's time to be up, pick up your list in your mind where you left off and continue praying for others. Don't forget that you need a day each week to break from the daily grind of work and stress. A day to be grateful as we reflect on God's goodness over the prior week. That is one reason God gave us the Sabbath at creation. God bless you abundantly as you learn to stand farewell. At this time, we will have our special music done by Destiny Blackman and Shalena David. The sky above us would never turn gray, but life isn't always sunshine, and we have times that leave us asking why. But when the clouds roll in and tears begin to fall, there must be.
is the redeemer of the rain. Every problem that we face is lifted by the Father through hands of grace. He uses sorrow to draw us, to call That he is always watching over us. Redeemer of the rain, the Lord will never waste our pain. He brings beauty out of brokenness and hope to our heartache. Healing out of every hurt that invades our shattered world. shattered world we never walk through trials in vain all we know is mercy long enough to save. say he's, he's the, the redeemer of the rain Thank you. Amen, indeed. We invite the ushers to take their positions at this time. While the ushers are getting into position, we invite you to dig deep into your pockets or your purses or your wallets as they come to you to collect this evening's offerings. Let's bow our heads. Our dear kind and most loving Father, we indeed want to say thank you for loving us, for providing for us. And we ask you at this time, dear Lord, that you bless the offering, bless those who have to give, dear Lord, and those who don't have at this time, may you provide for them to give at a later time. And may this monies go to furtherance of your gospel throughout the world and to help others. Thank you now for hearing our prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.
Well, good evening, everyone. Let's try that again. Good evening, everyone. Well, I made a promise to someone that on Wednesday we are going to have a special prayer request for those who have some special needs. And I like to keep my promises. So at this time, I'm, before I get into our fellowship song, we're going to have that prayer request. But first and foremost, let me recognize those who are here for the very first time. Just wave so I can see you. I see one, I see two. I was peeping so I know who else should raise their hands. There are only two or there are more. I think one more. But we want to welcome you to the program. I'm sure you'll be blessed. Those who've been here every night, you haven't missed an opportunity, just wave. Whether you're a member or you're a guest, just wave. Praise the Lord. And I want to ask any of our guests, you've only missed one night, one, any one night you've missed. Maybe it was that Monday last week. My guests, any guests missed one night? All right, so that means you haven't gotten the record yet. But that's all right, you're here in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I, I heard there's a birthday girl too. Dun, 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 dun. I see the hand, the queen's hand. Chica, 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 chica. Well, we say happy birthday to you as well. So we're going to stand, and an and, and organist, we're going to sing that says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Church members, help us sing so that our guests can hear. And we're going to invite you. You have that special need. Meet me at the altar. And we are going to have that special prayer. You have something that you need intercessory prayer for? Come down the aisle. You have... A special appointment with a doctor come down the aisle if you have something special that you want to pray about this is your moment I promise I will do it and here we are oh yes we're just gonna sing the first verse and stanza the first verse Pass me not all gentle you to stand where you are because we're gonna join our hearts together you know your specific needs I may not call it by name or by its nature but we serve a God who before you call he will answer and while you are yet speaking or I'm yet speaking he will hear he will respond that's the God we serve so let's bow our heads as we pray Heavenly Father, I kneel before your throne. I kneel before your people, Lord. Tonight, it's usually a prayer night. And we couldn't let that opportunity go without lifting our hearts in a special way for those at the altar. Amen. I know I did not mention those online, but I know their hearts are locked in because they too have needs. Father, you've invited us to come boldly before your throne of grace oh, yes. that we may obtain grace and help, Lord. 
And in these days, we need more than human help. We need divine intervention. Tonight, Lord, we confess we are sinners. There is something, Lord, that we may have overlooked or failed to do that may have caused us to experience where we are. And just perchance, Lord, it is something that you're allowing to make us a better child of God. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us if our attitude and our spiritual insight is not in tune with you. Father, there are folks here with health needs. Maybe a surgery is coming up soon. But Lord, we dare not lay under the hands of the surgeon before we give ourselves to the great physician, Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Lord, maybe there is someone here with financial challenges. Monies are due. Salaries are slow. Patience is thin. But I thank you, Lord, that you are still our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. You still provide. Oh, yes, you do. Father, maybe there are family issues. Husband, wife, parents, children, siblings, relatives. Oh, Father, you are still the God of the family. Amen. And you can still turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the daughters to the mother. And you can take out, Lord, the stony heart, Lord. And you can give a heart. We miss that when we pray that text, Lord, from your word. You're not giving it separate hearts to marital couples. You're giving them a heart of flesh. Amen. So I ask, Lord, you will bring unity in the home. Oh, yes. You will bring obedience to the home. Amen. And you will bring peace to our homes. Oh, Father, there might be an exam. Someone has an exam that is pending. And Lord, we know that the exam is sometimes set to fail us because it's not you doing it. But Father, we ask that you will help us to show ourselves approved a student of the subject. Amen. And Father, there's so many more things I can pray for, but at this time I will pause just for a few seconds and allow your children at the altar to whisper that need to you. You have heard it, Lord. Amen. And I know that you have said when we pray according to your will, we have the confidence and you will hear us. And if you hear us, you will grant the thing we ask you. And Lord, most of all tonight, more than our physical and temporal needs, we ask for your spirit and your salvation. Amen. So bless your church tonight transform your people and lord may today be the beginning of our breakthrough and for those who still have to go a little longer than today tomorrow next week before they see the answer your deliverance give them stick to itive power amen that they won't give up in the journey amen but they will hold on because you say lo i am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. And Lord, help us to be careful that when the breakthrough comes, we will thank you. We'll tell others it was you. Not the hand you used to bless us. Not the thing you used to bless us. But the very person, you, oh, yes. that blessed us. So hear our prayer. And we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Let everyone say... Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we give you a chance to get back to your favorite seat. We thank you for coming. We know God heard that prayer. And I am looking forward to the praise reports when they come in one by one. Because God hears and answers prayer. Well, we're going to put our, our fellowship song on the screen. We are going to stand. Don't sit when you go back to your space.
We're going to put the fellowships on the screen that my engineers at the top, they're going to quote unquote guide it. I, I, I'm going to forget the, the, to advance the slide once they're having fun. So I'm not going to do that to you because then you have to sing from memory. So we're going to do that and we're going to ask our folks in the top. And I really appreciate their work. They're keeping, they're giving me some pointers and some tips. And I'm appreciative of that. And, and the preacher is not above correction. This is not about me. This is about God. So the feedback helps to make it even better and sweeter. Tonight, my reader is here with me, as always. And I, I, I'm just asking God to do an outpouring on him tonight in Jesus' name. So, elder organists, we're ready to go. Let's do it. Here we go. New life in Christ, abundant and free. What glory shine, what joys are mine, what wondrous blessings I see. My past with its sins, my suffering and strife. Forever gone, there's a bright new dawn for in Christ I have found new life. We pause, we pause for the new persons. We're going to reach across the aisles. We're going to touch the man beside you. We're going to have a human chain. There should be no person standing by themselves. Get close to someone. Make sure you're holding someone because, friend, this place is only perfect and better when everybody is connected with somebody. What do you say? Because God says it is not good that you be alone. So you ready to go? Remember, we're going to move to which side first? To the right side. But I'm facing you, so it looks confusing. So let me turn them back to you to the right side. Are you with me now? Are you ready, organists? Let's go. New life in Christ. I'm going to join you. Uh, and don't let go if I touch you. And free. What glory shine. What joys are mine. What wondrous blessing I see. My past with his sin. You get it, it. My suffering and strife. Forever gone. There's a bright new dawn for him. Christ, I. One more time from the top. I didn't get to move around enough now. New life in Christ. Abundant and free. What glory shine, what joys are mine, what wondrous blessings I see. My past with its sin, my suffering and strife. Forever gone, there's a bright new dawn, for in Christ I have found new life keep those hands holding we're gonna go to the throne of grace that's where the power comes from that's where the message comes from not i but christ i kneel your children stand some are on their sofas but we all are waiting not i but christ lord I'm a sinner saved by grace through faith but tonight again I need your presence your grace and your infilling not I but Christ Lord we've seen you work in the past we look forward for you to work in the future but just about now Lord we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Be seated. Be seated. Well, tonight our topic, and thank you, the guitarists as well, tenor and bass. I say organist, but is everybody that makes it sound sweet? Uh, somebody's hearing me. Well, friend, tonight we're talking about more than just time. Uh-huh. 
So let's aim forward and see where we are. There we go. More than just time. Well, friends, we've been learning a lot and discovered a lot. And time flies away. So tonight I'm going to try to see if we can make it less than time, but still more than time. We've discovered that, that God has created this world and he made it by speaking and by forming man. And more importantly, he made this last day of creation by doing nothing. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. That sounds like a contradiction, but that's God. He goes beyond our thinking more than time. And friends, what is interesting is that when we read about this last day in Genesis 2, uh, verse 1 to 3, we can see something very interesting. Hear what it says. Reader, you're here tonight. Help me read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, uh -huh. and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God uh -huh. ended his work, which yes. he had made. Note. And he rested on the seventh day from mm -hmm. all his work, which, which he had made. Had made. And then verse 3 says what? And God blessed the seventh day mm -hmm. and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So note, we see a persistence of all the things God created in the first six days. Oh no, we still see it. Mm -hmm. But this seventh day that comes, we see it first here at the seventh day when it's created. Mm -hmm. But then it seemed to have disappeared in the Bible. Was it there or it disappeared? Mm -hmm. The it next time we see this seventh day concept actually comes in Genesis 16. Exodus. Exodus, you're, what, you're paying attention. Thank you. And, and, and Exodus 16 is after God brings his children out of the land of Egypt, Egypt mm -hmm. where they were suffering and, and, and in servitude for 400 years. And we see this seventh day again appears when he's telling them about the manna. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now what is interesting in Genesis 16, that's a little takeaway. I can't put the whole 16 on the screen. Exodus. Fast to get it right. You're thinking about Genesis. I am. I am. Yeah. But what is interesting about Genesis plus one more book, Exodus. <laughs> I got it right. It, it is that on, on the f day before this seventh day, mm -hmm. they could collect twice as much manna but if they collected any more than they needed for the day, other than that day before the seventh day, it, it was spoiled. It stank. Mm -hmm. Hello now. And they were to do with that extra on that day before the seventh day what they would normally do the following day. Mm -hmm. And it would preserve. Yes. And then some people were smart. I, I don't know if they were Caribbean in origin because the Caribbean wasn't existing then. <laughs> But some went out on the seventh day too, mm -hmm. looking for the manna. But did they find anything? No. No, they didn't find anything. And what was interesting is that when God saw that, he responded in a way that was strange. He says, how long will these people not keep my commandments? Mm -hmm. That's Funny true. statement. Hmm. Now, no, this came before, before Exodus 20 before That's right. in receiving the commandments. Just for a little thinking. I'm not going to go too deep in it yet. I just want to muse with you a bit. But what is interesting is that the next time we see this seventh day is at the giving of the commandments. Mm -hmm. But what is special now is that this seventh day becomes part of the Ten Commandments. Yes. How you know that, Pastor? Well, that, that's a good question. How you know that? Well, we're going we're gonna to try to answer that question tonight. Now, what is special here is this. God does not mention it in passing, this seventh day, but he enshrines this day on the, in the commandments and, and he, he actually puts it as something fitting in where the first principle we talked about playing by the rules. Yes. It wasn't really a first about man to man this day but it was rather man to God, God. Oh, yes. are you with me mm 
if you and what is interesting about this command is that he, he says to the people, remember it. Mm, interesting word. Mm -hmm. I'm a little confused, preacher. How, how could he say remember something that he was now given? True. <laughs> Think about it. Now, some people respond in this way and say, Pastor, it, 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 it was remember because in Exodus 16, he told them about it. <laughs> so when he says remember, he's referring to Exodus 16. Because that was collecting the manna. And he told them on this seventh day, they, they should not collect manna. So when he says, remember the seventh day, maybe he was talking back about the collecting of manna. What do you think, preacher, reader? Mm, I think it went before. Ah, you think thinking before. Mm -hmm. Anybody of that persuasion, that maybe that commandment is, is talking Back about Exodus 16, talking about the manner and the manner of conducting the manner. <laughs> Plenty manner. Well, here's something I discovered when I checked about this command. It, it is that when you read it, it makes no reference at all mm -hmm. to manner collection. That's right. So if God was trying to tell them, remember the day collecting the manner, he kind of missed a lot of, in, in the command. True. Which suggests that the day he mentioned has greater significance, significance. and proportions. Oh, yes. Mm. So I want to ask the question. I want to be fair tonight. I want to reason tonight, not to slow down the preaching, but to reason tonight. You know, put your thinking caps on. The Lord said, love thy God with all thy heart, with thy soul, with thy mind, mind and with thy strength. strength. So we want to put on the thinking cap tonight. Don't go to sleep on me. If you see somebody sleeping beside you, give them a little nudge. Don't break the ribs now. <laughs> now watch this. What is interesting is this, is that today there's a little confusion. What day is this seventh day? A lot. Is it Sunday? If you start the week on Monday, mm -hmm. it, it, it sure works out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I've seen calendars like you see on the screen that start on Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. Is it Saturday? If you start the week on a Sunday. Yes. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, we call those names without even thinking. But back then, those names didn't exist. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Did you get me? Yes. The only day that had a name, we'll see in the Bible itself. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to run ahead of my script. So, so the question is, which day really is this seventh day now? And I want the Bible to speak. Did you bring your Bible tonight? I, I decided to use the big one so that if I misread it, you can see he, he really need to get fresh glasses. <laughs> and I try to put some on the screen. So let's go back to the commandment he gave and let it speak to us now. So here we go. Read it, help me read it. It's on the screen, and I want you to read along tonight because you can't miss what you see. I hope you walk with your pen and paper or your phone, the, the note feature in your device, because I want you to take these texts. Oh, yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So, reader, let's go. Exodus 28 to 11. What Rem does it say? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh huh. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But Pause. Pa go ahead, but the seventh day. Oh, is no, the no, you're right ahead of me. Eh? <laughs> we just sticking on the screen. He knows it so well. He, he reading ahead. I have me frightened. Like I see any wrong thing behind, in front of me. So, so watch. The first two verses of this instruction is the commandment section, is the instruction section, mm -hmm. what to do section. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. It's like a software you download. There is an executable file that allows you to put the software onto on your hard drive yes. and do what the software is guaranteed to do. Yes. But along with the download file, there comes a script that tells you about the software. Mm -hmm. But the word, am I getting it right so far? I get the thumbs up. I'm in good place. Now watch verse 10 and onward. Verse 10 says what? 
But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the so Lord. So pause. It says the seventh day is the Sabbath. So we we so far have been seeing a seventh day in creation. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. We saw a seventh day when they were collecting manna. Mm-hmm. And now we're looking at the command and we see God introduce something extra. He says the seventh day is the Sabbath Sabbath day. Are you with me? Yes. I want you to read it slowly with me. And it continues. It says it's the Sabbath day of Pastor Haynes. No. Mm -mm. It's the the seventh day of the Jews. No. What are you seeing on the screen? Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So, so they weren't guessing which God they were talking about because there were other gods then that they were worshipping in Egypt. And if you take a trip to Egypt now, you will still see some of those gods existing, even if they're not worshipped. Mm-hmm. They gone quiet. So he says, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, your God. Mm-hmm. And then what it says, it says in it what? Thou shalt not do any work. Uh huh. Thou, nor thy son, mm-hmm. nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, mm-hmm. nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is with thee. Pause, 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 that I got to keep it too? That's, that's the expectation. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that doesn't sound like rights you take away my rights. I don't believe in that thing. I don't honor that thing. I don't even believe it is any Bible thing. But, but you telling me if once I come by you, I got to do that? I don't, don't come. Don't come. I don't come. I get uncomfortable, you know. Get me itchy <laughs> now. <laughs> but, but that's what it's saying. Isn't it saying that? Yes. So it says that even if somebody who was not a relative, not the ethnic group of yours, were with you, he must do what? Observe the Sabbath He must observe it. That's right. But note something too. It didn't just stop there. It says what? The manservant, nor the what? The maidservant. The maidservant, nor the what? The cattle. Now why he called the cattle? Hmm. Why he say the cattle? Now, if you understand what the cattle meant for them then, you will say not even the tractor or the truck, the truck should start up. That's right. Mm-hmm. Did you get that? Yeah. I see somebody eyes open wide like, what? How, how did I get so? Because the cattle did the work on the farm and he was saying not even the cattle should go out to work. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, that, that has to be serious. That's right, far reaching. That got to be serious. Now, no. Verses 8 and 9 says not to work. But we're looking at the script. And the script is reinforcing, making the link with the executable file and giving the reason and scope of how this file will work. Yes. But watch what he says in verse 11. What does it say there? For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Pause, 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 pause. Where did we hear this before? Genesis. Genesis where? Yeah. Creation. Genesis 2 1. Mm-hmm. So we are seeing now that God is making a link of this seventh day not back to the manor, but He's linking it back to creation. Did you get that? Yeah. So if I was of the school to think that the Sabbath related to the manor, and the way they should collect it, he's blowing it out of my head. He says, listen, why, why is this thing so serious? Why are you taking away the rights of the stranger? Why are you making the cattle chill out for a day? He says, for as in six days, the what? Lord. The Lord. Continue reading. The Lord did what? Made heaven and earth. Uh-huh. The sea and uh-huh. all that is in them is. And did what? And rested the seventh day. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly he's saying this seventh day that God rested after creating is now the same one coming up. He says, wherefore do what? The Lord blessed the Sabbath day Mm -hmm. and hallowed it. So pause, pause. I got to sit for this one here, boy. That will make me a little weak when I hear about blessing it and thing, you know? Because we like to be a blessed people. Some people say, I'm too too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm. 
So watch this. We use words, we forget the meaning. But to bless something means to extend or expose a high favor that is positive upon the thing. Amen. That's right. And you can't get a higher blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, in the, in the Bible, the fathers blessed the children. But the blessing was kind of dependent on oh, God in favor with what they were saying. That's right. You didn't get that. But when God blessed this day, he didn't depend on anybody because he was <laughs> large right. and in charge. Amen. He's the ultimate. But he also used another word. He says he did what, reader? Hallowed it. Hallowed it. Mm -hmm. We don't use them words now, you know, unless they're talking about hello, hello. <laughs> And what does hallow mean? Mm -hmm. It talks about taking it from common everyday use Making and putting it for special, set apart, religious, or sacred use. Yes. Amen. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. So clearly there, we are seeing that this command, this seventh day, is the Sabbath day, is special. Now, and I can hear some people saying, Pastor, I kind of get what you're saying, but I am still confused. You just said that back in those times, there was no Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So how we know which day now is the, the Sabbath day? Mm. I think that's a fair question. True? Yes. I think that's a fair question. And you know what? God does not leave us to guess. Amen. Praise I like to Lord. say euphemistically, he nailed it home. Ah, yes, he did. Yes, you he didn't does. get that. Mm -hmm. He nailed it home that we can't guess. Why? Let's take a trip from Exodus all the way down over a thousand years later to the cross. And we're going to Luke 23 and Matthew 28. What does it say there in Luke 23, 52 to 56, and then Matthew 28, verse 1? Let's read there and see how Jesus nailed this subject down. This man went unto Pilate uh -huh. and begged the body of Jesus. Yes. And he took it down. And wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulchre uh -huh. that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. So who is this man went to, to Pilate? This is Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea. Arimathea. Mm -hmm. He was a silent disciple. Yes. He had money and he had influence, but he kept it undercover. Uh, until. I have learned you can't tell everybody your business. Mm, all right. Until the Lord said, tell until, them your business. Until, that's right. You don't have to tell somebody you're a Christian because they might shut the door on you. But you get in, do what you have to do. When it's the Lord's time, he will expose you for his good. Mm. Are you with me? So this Joseph of Arimathea begs for the body. They take it down. They wrap it up to make sure it's ready for putting into the, the sepulcher. And they use a fresh sepulcher. I love that. You don't give Jesus second class. You give him first class. Amen. That's a principle we can't forget, we can't give. Don't come and give God a song that the world walking up on and then say, I convert it into a gospel song. Mm. Hmm. You miss me then. Don't come and give God a, a shoe that God, the belly laughing at you and when you bend down and saying good morning. <laughs> Save the best one for Jesus. Amen. And if when we give somebody something, we are doing it on to Jesus, don't bring the second class wrinkly old clothes to give away. Give me fresh thing. Amen. They go on quiet there. Amen. You know, sometimes we give away things we don't want, but oh. we keep the new one. Mm. Go on quiet, Pastor. Pastor D, they're keeping quiet. <laughs> but let me stick to the script. So what does verse 54 and 55 says? Let's read on. It's, and, uh, and that day was the preparation. So pause. Back in Jesus' time, there was another day that had a name. Yes. It was called the what? Preparation day. Preparation day. And, and the what? And the what drew on? And the Sabbath drew on. Well, we know what day it is. And if we can do some mass and know that the Sabbath is seventh, then the preparation day is the day before the seventh. So if I keep wait school and do, I didn't eat the school meals and drink the milk and biscuits only, I can say the day before is the sixth day. That's right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So it says, and the preparation day is, that was when they took him down. And the next day was the Sabbath day. And then verse 55 says what? And the women also which came with him from Galilee uh -huh. followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. Did you get that? 
Now, back in those days, women were second class, but they were very more bold than some of the men. Because hmm. they asked him, where is Peter? Where is John? Where is the other 11? But that's all right. God knows who he wants there. Hmm. Aye, aye, aye. But watch now verse 56. Now, what does it say? And they returned and prepared spices and ointments mm -hmm. and rested the Sabbath day. The what day? The Sabbath day. We saw it in the verse before. Yes. Preparation day, then the Sabbath day. They rested the Sabbath day according to what? To the commandment. The what? Commandment. So where do we see a seventh day and a commandment connected? Exodus we see it in Exodus 20. 20. We read it tonight. Mm -hmm. So let's pull it together in the order there because I know what slide will come next. And, and, and I want you to go now to, to, let's get it before we go to 28. So we see that Jesus dies on the preparation day. Mm -hmm. They beg for his body. They took it down, prepare it, put it in a supplicant now man has been in. And then the next day is the Sabbath day. And they rest it. And the ladies spy out where to put the body. And then they rested according to a commandment. Mm -hmm. Did you command, get that? The commandment. I said the, a commandment, but they said the what? The commandment. And I'm glad you said the commandment because when you see the word the, That's it is talking about something specific. That's a definite article. Mm -hmm. Don't miss that. If I say, see the nice girl there with the black long hair with the blue beside this, this fella, do you know I'm talking about somebody specific? Mm -hmm. But if I say it was a girl that give me it, it could be any girl. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I hope you're getting this thing. The Bible does not disengage your brain. You've got to use your English and your mass. That's why you've got to be bright when you study the Bible. Bright with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's still free. Now watch Matthew 28 verse 1. What happens? Boom. Look, oh, I'm going too fast. Good. There we are. It says what? In the end of the Sabbath. Now note how Matthew links this day. He says in the end of the what? Sabbath. So note, we see already, we see preparation day, then comes the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Then we see the ladies retire and rest according to the, the commandment. commandment. And yes. there's only one commandment that tells us that we should rest. Yes. And then we go on now as the saw, the end of the Sabbath. What next we see? As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Uh-huh. Came Mary Magdalene. Praise God for Mary. Mary. And who else came? The other Mary. The other Mary. To see the sepulcher. Did you get that? But they knew where the sepulcher was. They didn't, use, they didn't need GPS because they spy it out before the Sabbath, yes. before they rested. So they knew where it was. And then they came back on their own to see, well, let me finish the process we started. Mm -hmm. But you know how the story goes. The image shows that the tomb was empty. empty. Praise the Lord. So let's understand the line. We have preparation day. Sabbath. Sabbath, and then we have first day. first day of the week. And we know what happened on the first day of the week when they came to the tomb. Mm -hmm. Jesus had risen. Mm -hmm. up from the and coming up at the end of this month, we are going to celebrate that period. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So, so, so here is my, here's my little concern. If we can find out what is Easter Sunday... And you can show me Good Friday, mm -hmm. then I can tell you what is the Sabbath. That's right. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. If you can tell me what is Easter Sunday, yes. and what is Good Friday, mm -hmm. then I can show you the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Now mind you, the day that you call Easter Sunday is a Sunday, but it's not the real day that Jesus rose on. That's true. The Friday you call Good Friday is a Friday, mm -hmm. but it's not the exact day Jesus rose on. That's true. But it's still the day of the week that represents the real thing. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the Sabbath is like the peanut butter between the two dry breads. That's right. Amen. Party fish cake. And if no, nothing else we ain't get, we let me go beijing. It's like the fish cake between the yeah. bread and two. That's right. <laughs> yes. My interpreters online will translate that. You got to come to this island and get a bread and two. That's right. <laughs> you didn't get that. Mm -hmm. What am I trying to say, friends? I'm trying to say that God did not leave us to guess because the most important divider in human chronology, B.C. and A.D., the cross of Jesus, oh, he yes. pinned the Sabbath to it. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Somebody's hearing this for the first time. Mm, true. Maybe not. Pastor, I like how you sung, but, but here is the truth. My pastor tells me that there's the Lord's day. Mm. Ain't that the Lord's day? Mm. And, 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 and if it's the Lord's day, my pastor told me that we keep that Lord's day in honor of the resurrection. Hmm. Are you with me? Yes. And I asked myself, well, um, the Lord's Day, where in the Bible talks about the Lord's Day? So I did a little search, I ain't break all the time, and I went to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 2, and I found a text there. Let's jump to it. The Lord's Day. Hear what it says, Mark 2, verses 23 to 28. Let's do some reading. Uh, forgive the long text tonight. But I want the Bible to speak. What does it Amen. say there? And now it happened that he went through the green fields on the Sabbath. Uh-huh. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of green. Yes. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So note, Jesus is on the Sabbath day. And the fellas get hungry. And they pick some heads of ripe green. And I can imagine it peel it off and rub it in the hands and blow the husk and start chewing. Mm -hmm. The best gravy is saliva. <laughs> like but that. it tells me that somebody was spying on them. Mm, and when they did it, they complained. That's not right. You shouldn't do that. Why are you letting these do that? Which suggests that there were laws in the time of Jesus that he was expected to follow. Mm -hmm. True. But he wasn't following them. I want to blow this out of the, the ballpark first and foremost. Some people say Jesus kept the Sabbath because he was a Jew. No. But I want to suggest to you Jesus didn't do anything because of his ethnicity. He did it because of his father's direction. Amen. And this is a clear example. Amen. Because there were laws existing then that suggest what they were doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't following it. He was a bad boy, if you please. <laughs> Because he was a good boy for his father. Amen. Oh, but watch what it says there. But he said to them what? Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? Oh, my goodness. He and those with him. What did he do? Let's hear. Read on, reader. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest. Mm -hmm. And ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest. You get that. And also gave some to those who were with him. So pause. So Jesus always liked to give a tongue twister. They're complaining about what his folks are doing. But Jesus says, but, but you guys know King David, whose city this is? Jerusalem, and you honor him. But if I get right, he did something that he shouldn't have done. He ate bread that only the priest should eat. Mm -hmm. And God didn't strike him dead. Hmm. And you have not rejected David and say, spit on him. <laughs> Wicked man. Hmm. You affirm it as the king of this city. Hello now. And I want to suggest this. In circumstances that are difficult, God's grace can do something interesting. Mm. Did you get that? Amen. It was not right for David to do it. It was for the priests, and David was not a priest. His men were not Levites. But God made the exception for good reasons. Mm. And, my Bible, and Jesus didn't give the reasons. He just said it happened. But watch this. It continues. It says what? And he said to them, uh -huh. The Sabbath was made for man, uh -huh. and not man for the Sabbath. Uh -huh. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Did you get that? He says the Son of Man is the Lord, Lord of, of the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Now, when I was at school and, and we did possessive pronouns and possessive phrases, if it say the Lord's day mm -hmm. or the day of, of the, the Lord, Lord, it's the same thing. Yes. Did I get that wrong, Elder Welch? Oh, right. I think on track. All right. So here Jesus says the Sabbath was a gift to man, but the Son of Man, I said, but it says, therefore, the Lord, the Son of Man, and he was speaking of himself, it's is also, also the Lord of the Sabbath. So the Lord's day is the Sabbath. Did you get that? Amen. I hope my English is right. 
So what is telling here is this. When I go down to Revelation 1 verse 10, and I see John says, I was in the spirit on the what? On the Lord's day. I can conclude based on the Bible's testimony that John was in his vision on the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Uh, I know a lot of people say, I know you're going to try that in my face. I know you're going you're gonna to say this. I know you're going to say that. But here's the truth. Remember the topic of my sermon? Mm -hmm. More than just time. time. It is more than just time. But friends, I, I, I want to be honest with you tonight. There are some sincere Christians that do not keep the seventh day as the Sabbath. That's true. I want to sit down. I don't want you to think I know the truth. I sit down to reason with you. They don't keep the seventh day as the Sabbath. And I want to say before I show you the next set of slides that I have some very good friends who keep Sunday service. Mm -hmm. Me too. Hello now. And some of them are Catholics, Roman Catholics. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but I've had the distinct privilege, I call it a distinct privilege, that I have had the ability not only to worship in a Catholic church, but to also be participated in leading the service. Mm, I know right. you can call for my, 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 my credentials now when I hear that. <laughs> Pastor Hans leads service in the Catholic church? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. We had an ecumenical service where you had different religions coming together to celebrate the national independence of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, October 27. Mm -hmm. I think I still got it right. And in that service, different pastors did different things from different churches. Right. And I was asked to be the worship leader. Mm -hmm. I couldn't say MC because it's something religious in a party. And I accepted it. Hello, no. But here's the thing. When I came to the church, the Catholic church there in St. Vincent, the church of the Assum uh, 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 Assumption in town, I was expecting to sit on the lower bench and let the bishop and other big fellas, Monsignor, sit up front. But when I got there, they said, no, Pastor Haynes, your seat is there. And when I looked, it was beside the bishop himself. Mm, all right. I'm telling you that. So if you write in the conference and ask for my resignation, you know why they want to do it. <laughs> and I did it with pleasure because here we were, we were worshiping and thanking God for the blessings of national independence. Amen. You go on quiet. Amen. Not only that, but I've had the privilege that a Roman Catholic lady, she had a special project to children and I got to be drafted in the project. Amen. So I put my money where my mouth was. Hmm. And we helped with the project. What was that project? We blessed some orphan children. Amen. They go on quiet. Amen. I know some people say, Mark, the beast and compromise and all kind of thing. Okay, feel it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there are sincere people oh, who yes, God loves. That's a fact. That's a fact. And some Christians are so confused that they don't see past the titles of your church. Mm, very they true. gone quiet. Mm. I'll say enough. But I want to show you something. Why many people follow Sunday and not the Sabbath as we just saw from the Word of God. And I want to suggest to us is that God is merciful and he's going to give them an opportunity to see what we are seeing tonight oh, if yes. they will let him. Oh, yes. Amen. Are you with me? Oh, yes. And I ain't trying to butter up nothing. I believe that with not just some of my heart, but with oh, all my, my heart. heart. Yes. And we talked about it two days ago. So okay. let's see what we have here. I, I, I realize why this doesn't work. I have to be line of sight so that it will, it will behave itself. So let me go. Choo, choo, choo. There we go. See again, naughty now. You move forward, Jenny, folks. You have answered by one. There we go. It ain't like it freeze there. Well, there we go. Now watch. Now the, now the first, the first law 
that made civil law, that made Sunday special, came from Constantine. Yes. And the date is there. I, I, I say this, the more information I show you, you can check me out and prove if I'm trying to trick you. Mm -hmm. Hello now. So the first civil law that made Sunday special was in March 7th. This is the same month. Didn't you get it? Literally six days ago in history. And it was saying in that command, listen to what it's saying there. It says on the what? The venerable day of the sun. Uh-huh. Let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest and let all the workshops be closed. Do you know we still have those laws here in Barbados? Yes, on the book. We call them the blue, blue laws, laws in Barbados or the shop act. Mm -hmm. It tells us when we can open for business and when we can close. Did I get that wrong, Brother W? No, please. It doesn't stop there. It continues. It says, in the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits. So no, they're saying, in the city, take a chill. That's right. In the country, well, we got to eat food, so you got to do what you do, feed the cattle, collect the eggs, milk the cow. Yeah, keep working. These things can't stop on a day. Are you with me? Yes. Or can they? <laughs> But that was the first law. So watch it goes on now. Now watch what history says. It says in the year what? 325. And we're reading from Historia Ecclesiastica. That's the Council oh, of Laodicea, yeah. page 739. You can take a screenshot and check me out. I have nothing to hide. If I'm here telling you lies, expose me. Yeah. But here's what it says. It says in the year 325, what happened? Sylvester, Bishop of Rome changed the title of the first day, mm -hmm. calling it the Lord's Day. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So this sincere priest, I, I take him as sincere, he changed the, 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 the name of the first day to the Lord's Day. Lord's Day. No, no, he, 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 he had legal precedence to say Sunday was special. But here he is now, is calling it first day, the Lord's Day. I read on, I quote again, this is from the Christian Sabbath, page 16. It says the what? The Catholic Church, mm -hmm. for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, did what? Changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. Now you, you check out the quote for me. That's, that's not me writing that. That is what the book says. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So we're saying to you tonight that somebody changed it mm -hmm. and there are sincere people never did this history are keeping it. Yes, that's true. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. And remember what I said, in ignorance, God does what? He winks. Yes, please, he winks. And I love a God like that. Amen. He will not hold you accountable for something you didn't know. But here's the truth. I keep saying it every night and I'm saying it again. Now that you're listening to me tonight or watching this stream, I'm watching you straight in my eyes, straight ahead to that camera. Now you're listening to this. You need to go and check it out. Oh, yes. Because if I am wrong, you need to put me straight if you love your neighbor. Yes. But if what I'm saying is true, then you have to make a decision with the information you're learning. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? That's right. It's very important. So it goes on. What else does it say here? It says, this one is from the Catechism and Fundamentalism, Carl Kettering, 1988, page 38. What does it say there? It was the Catholic Church that decided Sunday should be the day of worship mm -hmm. for Christians. All right. In honor of the resurrection. Haven't you heard that? Mm -hmm. That people say Sunday was the day that Jesus came out the grave. Therefore, to remember that special event, we should honor Sunday. Yes. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I can hear the sincerity in it. Well, Jesus came out the grave. That was salvation for humanity when he came out the grave and he was accepted. So to remember it, we should keep this day. Mm -hmm. It's like couples celebrate the anniversary. Mm -hmm. Once a year. You didn't get that? <laughs> the day I first saw her mm -hmm. and she blew me off my feet. And sometimes the woman say, you remember that day? What was I wearing? And the fellow said, I can't forget that you're wearing a red dress. I remember this song, Lady in Red, and I remember it was playing. And you say, wow, you remember, and it becomes special. But we can't do that with biblical things. Hmm. 
We, we can't decipher God how we're going to remember things. We got to remember what he says yes. to remember. Somebody is following me. Yes. So let's read on and see what this says. We have here the St. Catherine Catholic Church Sentinel, 1995, November, May, uh, no, May, May 21. 21. What did it say there? It said people what? People who think that the scriptures should be the sole authority. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. When it says the sole authority, what does that mean? It means we're not using anything else to, to undergird what you believe. Hello now. Mm -hmm. They should do what? Logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep Saturday holy. Now let me sit down for this one. I, I want to make a disclaimer. Please do. I did not write that. That's right. Neither did an Adventist. Hello. <laughs> This community of faith didn't write that. That's right. I give you the reference. Check it out. Are you with me? And I'm just showing you this tonight because I want to be honest with you. Amen. Just sharing. Are you with me? Amen. Now, if I knew something that you didn't know, but I hide it from you to, to trick you, then I am a demon in, in, in clothing. True. In a suit. Hello. Mm-hmm. And I want to give people the option to make an intelligent and important choice. So well informed. That's Did you right. get that? Mm -hmm. Intelligent and important choice. Mm -hmm. And I'm not putting this here to smash no egg in anybody's face or criticize anybody's religion or faith. I, I don't do that in my preaching. That's right. But the topic demands that I be honest with you. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So if I lose friends, I know I still love you. Mm -hmm. If you get vexed with me online and, and, and stop viewing from this point, I still love you. Mm -hmm. Somebody's hearing me. Yes. Oh, but what is important is this, my friend, is this, is that the disciples too kept the Sabbath. Yes, they did. Let's put a few texts up there to prove it. Acts 13, 42, 44. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, uh -huh. the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them N the no. next Sabbath. Pause there, reader. It says when the Jews went out the synagogue, mm -hmm. it left the Gentiles. That's right. So I've heard people say, well, the, the Sabbath is for Jews and the Lord's Day is for the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But watch this. It says the Gentiles begged the, the, that these words might be preached to them the, the next day. The, the next Sabbath. I'm confused, Brother Clark. If, if the Jews only kept the Sabbath, why would Gentiles want to wait another week to get it when they could say, come tomorrow? Come tomorrow, that's true. That would make sense. Hmm. But you know, they came a week later. Watch verse 44. What it says? It says on the next Sabbath, almost the what? Whole city came together to hear the word of God. So, so the disciples who were Jews and the Gentiles who were believers kept hmm. the Sabbath. Yes, they did. Amen. That's in your Bible. Write down the text and check it out. But we go to Acts 17, 1 and 2. What does it say there in verse 4 to, to bring the, the thing? It says, and this is now in Thessalon Thess Thessalonica. Hello now. That, that first story was in, in, in a place called Antioch yes. of Pisidia. Now we're in Thessalonica, another Jewish place with, that is in the enclave of the Gentiles. Hear what it says. It says, now when they have passed through what? Amphipolis. Amphipolis. Mm -hmm. and Apollonia. Apollonia. They came, came to, to where? Thessalonica. Where there was a what? Synagogue of the Jews. A synagogue of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Well, pastor, I taught you to Gentiles. Let's keep that thing. Only Jews is going to synagogue. All right. Let the text speak for itself. Verse 2 says what? Then Paul, as his custom was, uh -huh. went into them and for three Sabbaths mm -hmm. reasoned with them from the scriptures. For three Sabbaths, you know. But then look at the results in verse 4. What does it say there? And some of them were persuaded. No, no. Not everybody accepts new things. And not everybody accepts a different thing. True. Are, are you getting me? But watch what happens. Those who did were who? Greeks. It says, and of the devout Greeks, not a few of the leading women joined Join what? Paul and Silas. So no, it wasn't only Jews who accepted it, That's but it was right. the Greeks, the non-Jews that accepted truth. Yes. And I want to say that when you love God and you see something new, but you prove it is true, you can't walk away from it. You got to hold it tight like it's a buy one, get one free sale. Amen. 
And that's the attitude God wants for his children. He says, I want you to prove it. And once you've tested it, hold it tight. Amen. Somebody's hearing me. Oh, yes. Oh, friends, but watch this. I, I want to change gears a bit and, and say this. When I think about the Sabbath, I'm convinced that it is more than just time. So am I. The ta- Sabbath is more than an argument to, to, to keep or to rub it in somebody's face. Mm-hmm. And I want you to pay attention because this is new. This is new even for my brother sitting in the, in the pews. What is that? This gentleman, Gary Chapman, yeah, psychologist book. in his ministry, he developed something called the love languages. I love languages, yes. And, and over the years of study, he realized that people express love in five ways. Mm. Boom. Here they are. Access What's their words of what? Affirmation. Quality time. Receiving gifts. Receiving gifts. Acts of service. Acts of service. And physical touch. And physical touch. So what he's saying there is, when I want to show my love for someone, I show it in one of these five ways or a combination of these ways. Yes. Mm-hmm. Are you with me? Now let's show you this. When you look at the Sabbath that God says to remember, it actually fits in all five of those love languages. Mm, And I want to put it to you tonight that when God gave us the Sabbath, it was not about time, but it was God showing his love for his creation. Amen. So pastor, prove that no. Come, you never see that yet at all. Break that down for me. Let's go. So watch the first one. When God is there with his creation, he knew what he was doing. So the first one, words of affirmation. God. That is that people like to hear words that remind them how much they love yes. and how special they, they are. are. So watch this. Ezekiel 20, 20. It says what? God Hello. is a what God? Personal God. Uh-huh. He says what? Hallow my Sabbaths, uh-huh. and there will be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your God. If nobody here sitting down can admit it, I'll say, we like to be intimate and special with the one that we love. Amen. That's why adultery hurts so much because how that other woman, what she got that I ain't got, why well, you had to go to she first, I is your wife, why you do that to me? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So when God says, I, you, you, you keep my Sabbaths, it, it shows that we got a thing going. Hello now. Ah, that's right. Amen. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. No, that is a word of affirmation. You and I are special once we stay in this relationship. Amen. Can't touch. Well, watch it. I just give you a sample. Quality time. Yes. Mm-mm. Quality time. When people like to, to, they got some people that don't want to go out. And if they go, it's only two of us. Or sometimes they, they, they like to do things together, spending time together. Hear what it says in, in, in Revelation 14, 7. What does it say there, preacher? Sing with a loud voice. Mm-hmm. Fear God mm-hmm. and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. Mm-hmm. And worship him who made heaven and earth. The sea and springs of water. Did you get that? Did you get that? Worship. So, so quality time is when we worship God. And the Sabbath day is a day for worship. Because Amen. you don't see the word Sabbath there, but you see the word creator. And the God who created also keep the Sabbath. Yes. Watch it also. It's a time for family too. Watch mm. it in Exodus 20.10. What does it say? We read it before. But it's, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord uh-huh. your God. Yes. In it you shall do no work. Yes. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle yes. nor your stranger who is within your gate. Did you get that? So it is quality time for everybody. And you know what is causing a lot of family breakdown? That somebody running to make the almighty buck and they're destroying their family. Mm-hmm. You go on quiet. That's why somebody could have write a song. A woman needs love just like you do. Mm-hmm. And somebody else more, wrote a more recent one. I ain't no superwoman. Dum, dum. Why? <laughs> Because these people are crying out saying, I want to spend quality time with you. Yes. And God is saying it. When I give you the Sabbath, it's time for us to spend quality time. Yes. 
Oh, but let me hurry. Let me hurry. It's also a time of service, acts mm -hmm. of service. Jesus himself said it there in Matthew, Matthew 12, 11 and 12. He said what? What man is there among you who mm -hmm. has one sheep? Yes. And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, yes. will not lay hold of it and lift it out. Uh-huh. Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Uh-huh. Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Did you get that? So God provides a day that we can do acts of service. You didn't get that? I know a young lady, she's in the grave now, but because her neighbor did an act of kindness on the Sabbath, she said, tell me more about why you did it. Mm, amen. And she got in contact with the pastor and they did a Bible study and she gave her life to Christ before she died. Amen. Because somebody did an act of service. Oh, but it didn't stop there. I love this one, receiving gifts. What is the Sabbath to us? We read it already in Mark 2, 27. He says what? Well, and he said to them, the Sabbath, Sabbath was, was made, made for who? For a man and not man for the Sabbath. So here's the beautiful thing. When we understand the Sabbath correctly and we enjoy it, friend, it is not a burden but a blessing. Oh, yes. Let me prove it from, the, from Isaiah. Hear what he says there. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. Uh-huh. From doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Isaiah 58. And call the Sabbath a delight. Uh-huh. The holy of the Lord. Yes. Honorable. Yes. And shall honor him not doing thine own ways. Mm -hmm. Nor finding thine own pleasure. Yes. Nor speaking thine own words. What God promises to do then. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. Yes. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places ride of the earth. Ride on the high and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Did you see that? Amen. So watch God is saying, I, I, you're going to receive gifts. This day is loaded with blessings. I've set it apart and I've blessed it. So when you make it special, like special for me, you are going to have the love language of gifts. Amen. Do we see it like that or we see it as a burden? Mm. Mm. Think on that. Oh, but friends, watch this. It's a physical touch too. God doesn't spend time with you, but he also touches you. Mm -hmm. Because hear what he says in Ezekiel 20, verse 12. He says what? Moreover also I gave them my Sabbath mm -hmm. to be a sign between me and them yes. that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. And for God to sanctify me, he must pardon me. Amen. He is cleansing me. He's changing the brain waves in my mind, the neurons, giving me fresh neurons to do things that are right by reflex. Hello now. He's giving me a new desire, new passions, new attitude. We talked about it the other night, loving God with all my heart. And that is a physical thing because people will tell you, I can sense the presence of the Spirit in the room. That's touch. Yes. Did you get that? That's presence. And I want to say... Do, serving God is not just not doing wrong, but is also doing right and enjoying it. Amen. And I want to suggest to those viewing on TV, some of us have a very rigid relationship with Jesus. We just check in black and white. I didn't do this, I did that. But God wants more than just a do. He wants to have a relationship with us. You don't want a husband that just bring the money and put it on the table and say, take that, spend it, and go on in his room, put his, his device, TikTok or whatever. You want somebody that will talk with you, somebody that will dine with you, somebody will dance with you, somebody will touch you and kiss you and have fun with you. Amen. Amen. And that's what God wants from you too. Amen. Oh, yeah. I'm confident when my young people in the balcony get that kind of relationship with Jesus, they ain't going nowhere. That's right. Uh-huh. I'm almost finished. Uh, I, I know that the, 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 the devil is, is, is not happy tonight. And from the garden, he attacked the woman. Hello, no. From the garden, the devil attacked the first physical woman. And in the end of time, he's still attacking the, the spiritual woman. Are you with me? 
And when I, we know that who the, the serpent is because Revelation 12, 9 tells us it's Satan. Hello now. And I'm saying that the enemy of trying to destroy the Sabbath is not a church. It's the devil. Yes, it is. You didn't get that. Don't get tied up on the institution and the quotes I showed you. I want you to get the real cause behind it. Because the devil knows how special the Sabbath is between man and God. And sometimes he uses those who say they're keeping a Sabbath to destroy it. You miss that. What do I mean by that? Sometimes our very own children that grow up in a home that keep Sabbath want nothing to do with it. Because we make it rigid. We make it no joy. We make it burdensome. And sterile. And then when they're seeing other people smiling and happy, that's why I jump out in the, in the congregation. That's why I have our songs, New Life in Christ. That's why I always try to smile. Because if I got Jesus, as the song say, I've got joy, 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 dung in my heart. If I truly have the joy of Jesus in my heart, then it should show. On my face. Oh, yes. Amen. People should have a passion to be with God. Yes. Yeah. You know, sometimes even on the Sabbath, we're worried about time more than eternity. Hmm. You, you didn't get that? We waiting, we got the clock set that we know when the sun set. Hmm. That's not how it go. If you go with a date with a girl you long to be with or a fellow you long to be with, you ain't watching clock to say, it's time to go home. Sometimes they go, you hear the phone say, where you be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they gone quiet. Some of you know how we're talking about. You didn't have your car, but you had to catch the 11 o'clock bus and had to walk. <laughs> Cause when 11 o'clock come, you're still in the people's house or in the patio. Cause the parents used to keep you outside, not in the bedroom, nothing. That's you're true. smiling when you're guilty. <laughs> Some of us sit down and we watch these movies two and a half hours and we don't complain about the time. Because we're enjoying the movies and then we can vote for the Oscar. But I'm saying God has something better than the movies. Amen. Better than the girlfriend. He says, I want to give you my presence. And I'm going to bless you in all the love languages. And I'm delightful to have you because I'm longing to be with you. Amen. Amen. And if I say I'm keeping it, let it show on your face. Oh, yeah. Oh, friends, tonight... When we have no life, God gives us the ability to enjoy his time. Amen. Oh, tonight I'm so glad that God has it more than time. Hmm. The word of God tells me even in heaven we're going to keep it. Oh, yes. Read, read that thing for me. It ain't going to end when this world ends. He says, even in heaven, we're going to keep it. Hear what it says, and it come to pass. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that from one new moon to another uh -huh. and from one Sabbath to another, uh -huh. all flesh shall come to worship before me, mm -hmm. says the Lord. I say, praise God. Amen. Amen. And I say we can start celebrating heaven. No. No. Mm-hmm. Because here is the truth. A friend of mine told me this. He might be watching the feed or somebody watching it will tell him. He says, if your desire to get to heaven is just for the streets of gold, mm -hmm. Wrong reason. you might not make it. <laughs> but if your desire to get to heaven is to see Jesus, Oh, praise the Lord. As the song says, Yes, I want to see Jesus. I want to look upon his face. You know the song by Donna McClurkin. I don't know all the words. But here's the truth. If your desire is to be with Jesus, you can start it here on earth. Amen. When you spend that time with him. What is your response tonight? I don't believe you don't want to be with the best person in your life. The man who came to this earth and died for you. I don't believe you want to throw him away and say, move, left me, left me. I believe the, the mere fact you're here this time of night after a day of work listening to this bald head preacher says you want to know more about Jesus. Amen. So I want to invite you to stand as we close in prayer. I know I've given some people a lot to think about. 
But even as we pray, you, pianist, you, you put something there for me. I want to say a special prayer for everybody, and then I'm going to make a call, give somebody a chance to get that life in Christ. Because here's the truth. Even if you're born in a family that keeps the seventh-day Sabbath, but you are not in love with Jesus and you don't have newness of life in you, still ain't going to make sense. It's true. Being born in a family doesn't save you. Being born in a, a community that keeps the Bible doesn't have an advantage. It exposes you. But you're going to make a personal choice to have that Jesus in your life. So I'm going to say a prayer. And I'm going to make a call. And you will know what to do when you hear the call. Because tonight, this is not about me. But it's more than time. Father, we are standing. Tonight, we've heard much. Some for the very first time. But tonight, Lord, we are thankful that you love us in all of the love languages. Amen. Father, you affirm that you love us with a love that is everlasting. Oh, Father, you want to spend quality time with us. You want to put the bricks on everything and just give us face-to-face -face attention. Oh, Father, you want to do acts of service because... Together, when we go out there to bless others, you're with us. And what we do to the least of these, we're doing it to you, Lord. So we are still in your love relationship. Oh, Father, you want us also to do, oh, Father, gifts. You gave us this gift of the Sabbath day. That we can enjoy the blessings when we give it priority. You will cause us to fly on the high places. And Father, every time I'm in a plane and I look down and see all the houses look like matchboxes or smaller, I remember your voice. It says, I will cause you to ride on the high places. Amen. Oh, Father, but best of all, Lord, you want to physically touch our lives. Yes. You want to take away the sin that so easily beset us. You want to take away the burdens and guilt and shame in our lives. And you want to robe us in the righteousness of Christ. You want to give us joy in our bosom and a pep in our step. Life that is worth living. Amen. But tonight, Lord, we can't get it if we're not walking with you. So, Lord... I make this appeal even as I pray. Somebody needs to meet you first before they spend time on your day. Yes. And I want to give that person the opportunity to come down to the altar and say, Jesus, I want to meet you. I want to get to know you. I want to spend that quality time with you because tonight the preacher showed me it is more than just time. Is there someone? I'm making that call even now in prayer. Oh, praise God. Amen. There's somebody else to join us. Just step out. And if you've come to the altar before, I encourage you to come again to oh, yeah. recommit yourself and say, Jesus, take me. I'm weak. Give me truth. And you, Jesus, you say you are the way, the truth, the truth and the life. And the life. Oh, yes. oh, praise God. Is somebody else to come? I'm not just talking to, to my guests. I'm talking to everybody that can hear me. You're saying tonight, Jesus, I want to get to meet you so that I can spend time with you. Friends, is now that you can make that decision before time changes to eternity. Is there somebody else? And friends, I see it. You're online. The, the, the barcode is there. Just scan it with your phone or your device. 
It'll open a link. You can fill it out. We will follow it up. We will follow it up. So I'm calling somebody, even in the balcony, make your way down. Amen. There's somebody else to come. Just step right out. Oh, praise God. Amen. Somebody else to come. You're saying, Jesus, I want to get to know you. Because I can tell you, the day won't save you. Because the Pharisees kept the day. Hmm. But they still says, crucify him. That's true. You see, they didn't know the man, Jesus. But tonight, if you know the man, you keep his day. Amen. You didn't get that. Let me say it again. When you give Jesus your heart and you claim new life, he'll help you to spend that time with him to show you his love. Amen. So just, just come. Just come to the altar. Oh, praise God. It's not empty, so you're not coming here alone. It's not empty. Somebody came and you're not coming alone. Some invite you to come. Oh, praise God. There's room for one more. There's room. Just step out. Just let Jesus know, I, I, I want to meet you. And then I want to spend time on your day. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? I know what time I'm going to cut off. But I want you to come. I don't have tomorrow put down. As a matter of fact, we're not going to be here tomorrow. But if you come, I can visit you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We can talk with you tomorrow so that we can make eternity sure. Amen. Maybe there's somebody else to come. Just step out. I'm tarrying for you. But just come. Maybe mommy needs to bring a daughter down the aisle. Maybe boyfriend brings girlfriend down the aisle. Maybe member bring their guests down the aisle. But friend, don't stay where you are if you haven't met him. The best place to be is where he wants you to come. And he's saying step out and give that sign. Let the devil know he doesn't have you anymore. You might not be perfect. Don't worry about how you're going to make it. He says, I will help you. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. There is somebody to come. I just know one more person at least. Your space is waiting for you. Just step out. Just step out. Somebody is waiting for you. Jesus is at the altar. Just step out. It's almost time when I'm going to stop. But I'm saying come. Just step out in confidence. You don't know what impact you'll have on your family watching this feed. You don't know impact what God can do through you when you make your step for him and stand for him. He can make your family different. Oh, yes. Oh, praise God tonight. Amen. Somebody knows the Spirit is calling. Don't say no. Just step out. Oh, just step out. My time is there. So, Lord, I close this prayer. Even as I close it, someone can come. Someone can say, Lord, it's me the pastor was waiting for. I can yield, I yield. I'm not going to stop. I'm coming, Lord. Hold on for me. Amen. Just come. Oh, Father, thank you tonight that you want to love us in all the languages possible. You want to do it by spending it in that time you set out. And Father, we ask that those viewing as they fill out the link, and we get in contact with them, that they too will take their stand with you and for you. Oh, I just thank you, Lord, that you don't judge us in our ignorance, but you call us to, to study it out and to reason it out. You say, come, let us reason together. And when we do so, you will do some changes in us. Amen. So, Father, hear this prayer. And I want to thank you for those viewing. Thank you for those at the altar tonight. It took courage, Lord, for them to step out. Oh, yeah. It took courage for them to say, Jesus is me. It took courage, Lord, for them to say, I want to sow it, do it publicly. And Lord, you will not disappoint them. You, Lord, once they come, you say, you will in no wise cast them out. Praise the Lord.
And Father, you know the challenges. You say, cast all your cares upon me. Not past the hands. That's right. But you, Jesus, for your care for us. Amen. Hear our prayer tonight, Lord. We say it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Those up front, you know my drill. Just sit in the first pew as we close. Sound service leaders, you can take it down to the end. Those who come just in the first pew, I always like to talk with you and encourage you. God bless you. And thank you and look forward to seeing you to Friday night when the topic will be living beyond the limits. So those who've come to the altar, just sit in the first pew. I'll have a, just a little say with you, and then we go. There will be an announcement after the theme song is sung. to victory.